Hey guys, welcome back to my second channel. We're gonna be covering something kind of special because earlier this week, the new DJI HD FPV system came out. It's pretty awesome. If you wanna see a full review video sort of thing, check out the video we made for the Rotor Riot channel. I'm super proud of this video. You can get all of our first reactions to flying this. You can see our test footage. Um, we cover the whole feature set, price breakdown, all that good stuff. If you want the whole overview, check that video out. I think it's a great video. Um, but in the comments of that video, we've been getting some questions, a lot of questions about um, specifics of how this the, the system connects to the flight controller and you know, do you actually need the DJI radio? And I think a good way to cover a bunch of those things is to just talk about the different ways that this system actually gets wired to your flight controller. So I wanna walk through the different connections that you can make and what you get for each of those connections. So this is the harness that comes with the, uh, with the system. It's cut to kind of random lengths because it's been in and out of several aircrafts. I only have one of these actual units. And our demo board today is this Joshua Bardwell flight board. So in the description, you'll see timestamps to all the different connection options if you wanna to jump to a specific one. The first one we're going to be covering is what I'll call video only. And that means all you're gonna do is connect the power and ground. You are just gonna power this unit. And simply by powering this unit, you, you can fly it. You don't need to use their radio. Once the unit is powered, you will be able to get video to your goggles, which means, I mean, you can, you can just fly it on whatever thing you wanna put it on. You could just put it on your dog and watch HD dog, right? So we're gonna connect our ground to the ground pad and our power wire to a, a nine volt pad on our Joshua Bardwell board. There we go. That's it. You can fly this system now. If we plug a battery, into the Bardwell board. The unit has power, it is transmitting. And we have, we have video. I don't know if you can see. There's video happening. You can fly it. Nothing's gonna stop you from flying it. You can fly this on Spectrum, Free Sky, Futaba, Crossfire, I don't care. Nothing's gonna stop you from putting it in the air. You, you don't need their radio. However, this air unit is capable of handling your RC. So essentially, if you're flying this just for, just as a video transmitter, you're like carrying around a second receiver in a sense, because there is receiving capabilities built into this. So it's just kind of dead weight. And you know, you're gonna need to put on whatever receiver you actually are using. Yeah, nothing to stop you from doing it. If you don't want to buy the radio, you might not want to fly something that looks like a phantom radio. I mean, it actually feels pretty good, but anyways, so, Let's say you do want to, um, well, no, you know what? Let's, let's hold off the radio link for a minute. What else can you do without doing the radio link? You can hook the white and the gray wire of the harness up to a UART of your flight controller. And what that is going to enable is on-screen display functionality. Now, at this time, it's not full beta flight on-screen display. DJI tells me that that is coming, that they want to essentially give you the full Betaflight on-screen display experience in, in the air unit. Because what the air unit's gonna do is render its own on-screen display. So let's actually hook this up. We're gonna grab the white wire and solder it to the TX pad of UART4. We're gonna grab the gray wire and solder it to the RX pad of UART4. Get in there. So now we're gonna connect this to Betaflight gonna go into our ports tab and for UART4, we are gonna turn on this configuration slash MSP. So this is gonna be an MSP connection. I'm gonna hit save and reboot. And now, if you've in the past used um, an off-board on-screen display unit, you're probably familiar with this. This is how you would hook up um, on-screen display units that aren't built into the flight controller. It's an MSP connection. It's the same sort of connection that the USB uh, connects with. It, it kind of gives the unit full access to your flight controller. So what that is going to enable it to do is via the on-screen display of the DJI system, it's gonna be able to give you data. 
Right now it only supports battery voltage, so it will give you your battery voltage. And it's also going to enable you to set things on the flight controller. So right now what that lets you do is your PID tuning, your rate tuning, your filter settings. Most things that you wanna do is actually built into the DJI menu system. It's really cool. Again, check out the Rotor Riot video if you wanna see how that menu looks. But you, you're navigating with the, uh, with the interface of the goggle itself and they have built a PID menu. And you use their PID tuning menu and it sends those settings to the flight controller. So now with these wires connected, we are not only able to get video to our goggles, which is what we need to fly FPV, but we can also interact with Betaflight, do the PID tuning, all that good stuff. And you still haven't bought the radio. So that's nice. But now let's say you do wanna get the radio because this radio will give you long range. If you already have a long range system like Crossfire, I can see why you might not want to deal with investing in this. But if you don't, I think it's a really wise move because it's only $300 for the radio. And we flew this out over a mile and a half close to the ground with you know, some mild obstructions. You can, <laughs> it's, pretty, it's good. So let's go ahead and connect the wire that's required for the RC link, and that's this yellow wire. So I'm gonna go grab our yellow wire over here, and we'll bring it over to the pad, and I don't know how well you can see this, that's labeled S for S bus. That is an inverted UART RX pad that is on this board specifically for S bus. This brown wire is a signal ground. I I don't actually know if you really need it. We will go ahead and connect it anyway, just to be safe. All right. Now let's plug this into Betaflight. The S-Bus pad that we used is tied to UART1, so we're just going to check the serial RX on UART1. Save and reboot. Now we're gonna go into Betaflight again and we're gonna to go to our receiver settings and we're gonna change the protocol to SBUS. Save and reboot again. Let's power this thing on. Oh yeah. And let's power on the air unit. Now we'll click over to the receiver tab and look at that, we have signal coming in just like anything else and there's, there's nothing that you're gonna to need to really mess with. In, terms of reversing the channel direction or setting the endpoint, it just works perfectly out of the box. A thousand to two thousand, all the directions are correct. We are good to go. Now here's something else I want to show you coming out in a future version of Betaflight. I believe, yeah, Betaflight 4.1, this is slated to be included. There is a new DJI specific protocol. So it is SBUS capable, which means it's going to be backwards compatible with any flight controller and any version of Betaflight that accepts S-Bus. But moving forward, Betaflight 4.1, you know what's coming? Look at this, DJI HDL. The advantage here is that you're gonna get the lowest possible latency. I'm not sure what the full latency is when you use S-Bus protocol, but when you use the DJI HDL protocol, they say you're only gonna have seven milliseconds of latency. That's pretty awesome. Now to get the system to function on the HDL protocol, you have to go into the goggle menu, go into settings and down to device. And then there is a, uh, a setting for protocol. And the default setting would be normal and that's, that's SBUS. And then you change it to DJI HDL, back out of it. And now, power cycle our unit. Go into the receiver tab and there we go. We are getting a signal, all the endpoints and everything are correct just as before. But now we are operating on DJI HDL, which I guess is gonna give us the lowest possible latency on this system. Those are the different ways that you can hook up the DJI FPV system like we went through, you can just power the system and fly it without actually connecting it to your flight board at all. If you do want the unit to be able to talk to Betaflight, 
you can hook it up to one of the UARTs and configure that as an MSP. And if you do want to make the most of this system and use it also as your receiver with the DJI remote, then you can hook it up to another UART and get receiving capability out of it. So lots of different ways to use it. I think this, this is a really awesome system and I'm really excited that flying HD is, is becoming more possible. So anyways, we talked about all this stuff on the review video that I mentioned. So make sure to check that out. And of course, make sure you're subscribed to my main channel, The Drib. I'm sure we'll be featuring this in one way or another at some point in my vlog adventures. So thank you guys for joining. Hope you learned something. If there are more questions that you have, leave a comment. We can cover it. Uh, Want to help everyone understand as much as they can about this exciting new system. So I'll see you again soon.